Well, we are continuing our partnership with TED to highlight individuals and ideas shaping our world in our series, Ideas That Matter. This morning, we are taking a closer look at climate change. The latest government climate assessment warns that by 2050, heavier rainfall in the Midwest could prompt increased flooding along major waterways like the Mississippi River. By 2071, temperatures in the southwest could climb more than 8 degrees, leading to longer droughts. And at the end of the century, sea levels could rise by as much as, get this, six feet in some places, endangering more than 130 million people who live on the coast. Climate scientist Catherine Hayhoe, who co-authored the report, says warnings may not be enough to spur action. We don't need to be talking about more science. We've been talking about the science for over 150 years. The most important thing to do is, instead of starting up with your head with all the data and facts in our head, to start from the heart, to start by talking about why it matters to us. And Catherine Hayhoe is here on set with us. Good morning. So happy to have you here talking about such an important issue. You are a scientist, yet you said when it comes to dealing with climate change and talking about it, get out of your head, get into your heart, and find shared values. Why? So often we think that we have to be an environmentalist or a liberal to care about a changing climate. But the reason why we care is because it already affects each of us in the places where we live. We only have to be a human living on planet Earth to care. But why does it have to become political, I guess, is the question that I'm asking. And why is this a debate at all? It's gotten political because of the solutions. Many of us have been told that the only solutions to climate change are to destroy the economy and let the government set our thermostat. In reality, the solutions are very different. They involve getting our energy from clean sources that don't pollute our air and our water, that grow the local economy, and that help the U.S. lead in the coming century. So is what you're saying about the debate over solutions, when you hear people doubting the science, is it your view basically what they're really doing is they're doubting the solutions and they're just making it look like they're doubting the science? Exactly. I've had thousands of conversations, and every single conversation I've had, including two just yesterday, within 30 seconds pivoted from it's just a natural cycle to the Green New Deal is a socialist plot. <laughs> well, talk about doubters. You had some in your own house. Your husband, I understand, was a doubter. How did you convince him or have you convinced him? And what are those conversations like? Well, he was the very first conversation that I had with somebody. Were and, you irritated by his position? Uh, no, I was surprised, mm -hmm. but I knew he was a smart person. I knew that <laughs> yeah. I knew that his heart was in the right place. Yeah. And so our conversation began with mutual respect, with me trying to figure out, well, what do you think? Why do you think that? What are your reasons? And him doing the same with me. And so what did you do? What did you say to him? We had many conversations. It wasn't just a one-shot deal. Yeah. We talked about the data. We went to NASA's website and downloaded the data. And he said, you know, at this point, I have to decide, is it warming? Or did NASA, who put men on the moon, actually fake temperature data? But really what it came down to was talking about constructive, viable, positive solutions that help people rather than hurt them. How big of a setback, in your opinion, was it for the president to pull out of the Paris Climate Accords? Well, interestingly, cities, states, businesses, uh, colleges, tribes that represent over 40 percent of U.S. emissions are still in the Paris Agreement. So there still is enormous forward action. DFW Airport is the first carbon neutral airport in the country. The city of Dallas gets its energy already from clean sources, as do other towns in Texas, like Georgetown. All around the country, we are seeing changes already happening, but we do need changes at the federal level as well to keep up with what's happening in cities and states. So, does it? Go ahead. Well, does addressing climate change, as we were talking about earlier, need to be an economy killer? No, it absolutely doesn't. I mean, in Texas, we have 30,000 jobs in wind and solar energy as well already. Across the country, there's more jobs in solar than in coal. So we're seeing these changes happen already. But unfortunately, there are some winners and some losers. And the losers are the corporations and the companies that make their money off extracting, processing, and selling fossil fuels. You're a devout Christian. How does your faith affect the way you look at the climate question? My faith is the reason why I am a climate scientist. Mm. I was studying astrophysics as an undergraduate until I just happened to take a course on climate science to finish my degree. <laughs> and I was absolutely blown away by the fact that climate change is not just an environmental issue like I thought at the time. It's a humanitarian issue.
Mm -hmm. It disproportionately affects the poorest and most vulnerable people here in the U.S. as well as around the world. So I thought to myself, how can I, who believes that we are to love others as we've been loved ourselves by God, how can I not do everything I can to give people who do not have a voice the voice they need to help us fix this problem? You said there we could all do something to fight it. So just give us two top things that we can all do. You said you've even reduced your own travel footprint. What can we do? Two things. Well, the most important thing we can do is what I talk about in the TED Talk. Talk about it. And that's what we're doing right here today. That's one. The majority of the people in the country don't talk about it. And if we don't talk about it, why would we care? Mm -hmm. The second thing we can do is step on a carbon footprint scale. If you're going to lose weight, the first thing you do is step on the scale. Yeah. If we're going to lose carbon, measure our carbon footprint online. There's lots of great resources we can use to do that. And figure out what we can do personally that makes the biggest difference. So eat less meat, put your clothes on the clothesline. Haven't seen one of those in a gazillion years. <laughs> yep. Reduce food waste and your light bulbs. Yeah. All right. I, I see tips Thank like you. this at hotels. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah. yeah. I do too. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought some enthusiasm to the table this morning <laughs> of this conversation. And you seem a bit optimistic about it too. I am. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Are you still married? I am. Oh, okay. I see the ring. Yeah. She's wearing it. Good, good, good. And you know what he gave me for Christmas? What? Solar panels. There you go. <laughs> yes. Very romantic. So he's wearing it. Yes. True love. It was the best present. Christmas and Valentine's in one. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you.